Good afternoon. Welcome back to the show. Another week has passed by and uh, if you still got the lockdown blues, you've come to the right place because we're going to try help you with those lockdown blues. Joining me today, Rita and Shawnee as usual, as we take a look at some of Bruno Fernandez's comments throughout the week, as well as him and the Paul Pogba dynamic, something that is on a lot of people's minds. So without any further ado, let's get into the show. Hope you enjoy this one, and I hope this is a means for you to get some sort of distraction, keep your sanity, all that sort of good stuff, blah, 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 blah. Your mental health is just as important as your physical health, by the way. So on a more serious note, you do need to uh, escape every once in a while. Um, but anyways, yeah, straight off the bat, Bruno Fernandes, I want to win everything. I'm hungry to win everything. I came here to win, to win titles, league, Champions League, and everything. We already have a big team. But whoever comes in needs to make sure needs to come to win. Just to focus to win. And I want people who are hungry for titles. Sounds a lot like Roy Keane when he first came to United, you know? Not in terms of the words, word for word, but the attitude seems to be the same as a Roy Keane. So what are you guys' thoughts on Bruno Fernandez's comments recently? Well, you know, I think those comments just sums up what we've been missing at United a lot. I think, you know, this is like one of the first players I can remember since probably Paul Pogba came in and Zlatan, that actually speaks out and he says that, you know, I want to win everything. He doesn't just mention the Cups win, he wants to win the bigger competitions like the Champions League, which we are not in yet, a league title which we haven't contested for many seasons now, bar that second place, which I think was a bit of a fluke despite the gap we had. But yeah, I know we need more of this and I'm so glad Bruno said things like this because we need more players like him and he's 100% right. We need more players that will come to United that want to win. So the recruitment has to be very good. And I think the recruitment has been good so far under Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. And I think that is 100%, 100% spot on where he says that we need players who are hungry to win title and want to win everything. I think he's definitely right. We need more leadership and we need more people who are hungry to win things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. I think leadership, he's showing leadership. It's something we've missed at the club, at this club for a very long time. And He's right. We we do need better players to come in if we're going to challenge for the titles in the Champions Leagues. And things change. I won't, I won't talk about structure or the board because I don't want to go there. But in terms of recruitment, like at the start of the season, what's the name again? Ole Gunnar Solskjaer didn't sign Dybala and some of us were a bit upset that he didn't sign Dybala. But then the more thought about it, like we can't be careless about the type of players we sign. That's been a problem for us for some time over the last six years. And since Ole has come in, it's improved, and we need to keep going on the trajectory. And yeah. Yeah, speaking of structure, by the way, United fans out there, take it with a pinch of salt. There are a few sources out there saying that Edward Wood will not be involved in transfers anymore. So I don't know if that's technically a demotion or what the case is there. I don't know who's going to be in charge of transfers if it's not going to be Edward Wood. But again, take it with a pinch of salt. It's something that we should think about because. I think that's Heimer on the nail. Perfect. We shouldn't be signing players just because they're big name players. We should be signing players because they have the right characteristics to play for the crest, for the Manchester United badge, the team we all know and love. And it is refreshing for me. You know, everyone talks about leadership, leadership this, leadership that. Mate, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's just refreshing to have direction. And I know direction comes from leadership and those things are correlated, but... I think it's just fresh to have some direction. I don't care what, I, obviously I do care what the direction is, but it's just refreshing to hear someone at the club other than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer say, this is mm -hmm. where I want to go. And I can be like, oh, okay, cool. Now I know where this guy wants to go. Let's see if he can get there. As opposed to, we go again on Monday. Tough game, yeah. we go again on Saturday. Tough game, we go again. Oh, we were so unlucky. We hit the post like three times. We'll get him next time. I, I was mm -hmm. so sick of that nonsense from all our players. Yeah. Look, um, so before Ole came in, the club was very divided. There was the manager who had his own agenda. There was the players that had their own agenda, and there was the hierarchy with their own agenda. I think since Ole has come in, we've seen a bit of unity at this club, and I think that's represented in these comments. Yeah, and uh, I would ask you guys if you think the squad is ready. Um, if you think the squad is ready with the addition of one or two signings, because. The thing about Bruno Fernandes is, this is what we speak about when we say bringing experienced players into the club. We're not talking about big name signings, but we're not talking about no names either. We're talking about a player who has the combination of both characteristics. On the one side, he's a very talented player, so that makes him a big name. But on the other side, 
he's got a very tenacious and hard-working character to him and the leadership qualities of a player and, and just the drive of a player who wants to win. And this is something we saw in Paul Pogba when he first came here. You know, Paul Pogba, when he first came here, lit up the Serie A, but people weren't really saying Paul Pogba, not everyone at least, people weren't really saying Paul Pogba's the best in the world, you know. He was mm. still up and coming when he was playing for Juventus. And it's similar with Bruno. He was playing so well at Sporting. Obviously, it's not as big as Juventus, but you have two very similar players and surprise, surprise, they're both midfielders coming in with a similar attitude. And a lot of people are saying, a lot. Of, I've heard a few United fans say that they're scared that Bruno has been sold a dream. I don't think he's been sold a dream. I just think, you know, and I, and I want to know your guys' thoughts on this. I just think from here on, we need to fix the players that are in this team because I still don't believe, if you remove either Bruno or Pogba, I still don't believe this team is good enough to challenge for, mm. for a title, let alone top three. And I know a lot of people disagree with me, but that's just my opinion because I think a lot of these players and maybe the, the, the word I was about to use is not the right word. Let me try to think of a better word. Yeah, actually, I, I've thought of a way to phrase this. I think a lot of the players in this team at the moment are not ready to win a title yet because they don't understand what it takes to culminate a winning attitude and actually deliver on your, your, your goals and your visions. You know, mm-hmm. it's very rare that a young team like the team we have right now wins a league title with barely any experience. Yeah. I mean, it's not just the players, it's the coaching staff, it's the managers, it's the clown who's controlling the transfers, you know, whether or not he's involved anymore. He has been involved for the last seven years. It's mm-hmm. the board that knows nothing about football. So in all different areas, we have a lack of experience. Forget leadership, we just have a lack of experience. We have a lack of proven talent. And I know a lot of people disagree with me on this. Martial hasn't won a Premier League. Rashford hasn't won a Premier League. You know, all these players, Dan James, you know, I can go on. They haven't won Premier Leagues. All of these players, except De Gea, you know, except, uh, did Maguire win one as Leicester in that magical season? Yeah. Okay, so Maguire really? is an really? example. Really? I don't know. I didn't, was, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Morgan was the captain at the time. I can't remember if yeah. Maguire was the next I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so Maguire, Maguire hasn't really proven himself at the highest level to consistently win trophies. We can say that to be safe. Even if he did win the Premier League trophy, it was just once. Um, Aaron Wembasaka, I can go on. You, you guys know this. Uh, my opinion on our squad currently is that they're not proven yet. Do I believe they have the potential? Yes. Do I believe they're on the cusp of, of breaking into that potential and really unlocking it? Yes. But I think the push they need is a couple of more players like Bruno. And I'm not talking in terms of talent. I just mean in terms of experience around the dressing room. And we need to stop this we go again nonsense off the games. It's, it's really. But what are your thoughts on that? No, I think it's 100% right because I think if you guys can remember when we drew against Everton and Bruno was like the early stages and like the rest of the team was saying, you know, other days uh, this is a good point against Everton and he said it wasn't good enough. You know, he wants to win every game. We shouldn't be looking and be happy about the point at Everton. We should be actually winning this game. I remember him saying something like that out of that game. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it just shows that we definitely need more players like Bruno, you know, and I think also the key to Bruno would be if we can somehow keep Paul Pogba, obviously. I mean, Paul Pogba is, is like a Bruno. We need more players like that. I just don't know who and if United will get them. Well, actually, Reti, you can go first before I cut you off. Yeah, in terms of him being sold a dream, I think we'll still have to wait and see. We'll see if this board is going to invest in transfers and they're going to invest, invest properly. So, can't really comment on that. But definitely, we need more players. We need more experienced players. I think it's both experience and a little bit more talent, but more so experience because they just won't grow experience. They are a young team and you need experience to win title. It's just how it works. And yeah, the talent as well. Look, a lot of these, we have a lot of talented players. We have Rashford, who's starting to go into the golden years of his career. Martial, we can see he's a brilliant talent. But the team as a whole, I'm not convinced are at the level of a Man City or Liverpool. So I do think we need like, uh, four more signings if we're going to be going to consider challenging. Yeah. And I don't Either think that's what things need to change, man, in the coaching stuff. Either yeah. that or things need to change. Because they I don't think Liverpool so, and City I don't will think... just sit back as well and just let things happen. Like they will mm. still get better and better and they'll still try to build on so they can keep increasing the gap to other teams. Yeah. The, the, look, the, the reason why I say the reason why I say that is because we've always said in this team they're a bunch of bottlers and we need leadership and experience. Leadership and experience doesn't just come from the pitch. So if we had a coaching staff that was in these players' ears, like, hey, 
you need to change this, you need to do this. Hey, you need to improve this. Hey, you need to keep your head up after this or whatever. It would it would go a long way because that's very similar to Bruno Fernandez. You don't you don't need well you do need a Bruno, but you don't need four or five Brunos. You just need a, a coach who can actually who can all you sometimes the alternative rather I should say is to have a coach a coaching staff and a managerial staff that's able to do what a player like Bruno does, and it's it's very difficult to find that in world football mm-hmm. because very few managers win trophies consistently at the highest level. Yeah. So. You know, but yeah, um, so a lot has been said about Bruno Fernandes over the last few weeks. Uh, it's a lot of positive stuff. Um, I will, I do think we will start to see haters sooner or later, like we did with Pogba. But, you know, that's a topic for another day. Bruno plus Pogba, we have to talk about it. You know, it's the cliche of the shows nowadays. Every United fan channel is talking about it. How do you think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should use them going forward? What do you think the dynamic is going to look like? Do you think at times... Perhaps it's a bit too overpowered, if that makes sense. Like they might clash, or do you think they're just perfect for each other? What are your thoughts? Well, you know it's very tricky. Obviously, we haven't seen them play. If the if Oli does want to play both of them, he, the ideal situation would be to play them both like box to box and have one holding CDM. But I'm I'm actually scared that uh, even when Pogba is fit, he's still going to stick with the two CDMs and play Pogba in a CDM role. But that, that's the one thing I'm really scared of because I have seen Oli do it when Pogba was fit as well. And, you know, with, in terms of Bruno, you know, obviously Bruno was asked about Paul Pogba and he said it's difficult to find a player like Paul. He's got, he has a lot of qualities and he hopes that Paul Pogba and him come back soon and link up. And, you know, there's been a lot of, let's say, positive vibes around Paul Pogba at Manchester United, you know. The social media guys and the admin at United are loving Paul Pogba. They're posting all the videos about Paul Pogba. You know, it seems very good. And, you know, yeah. everyone who knows, I will be extremely excited to watch these two link up. I think these two players are qualities above the rest. I think these two players could get into any team, possibly. Maybe Bayo, Cities, and Liverpool, maybe one. But I still think they would both get into a team like that. And in terms of how they would fit in, ideally, I would like them both box-to-box with the holding midfielder. And... Our actual holding midfielder is Matic, you know, maybe for a season and he has been good, so credit to you, credit to you. But I think, you know, we've spoke about how that CDM role has been a problem for us. So we, I would like another CDM and because obviously McTominay hasn't developed yet, he's very good, but he's not the quality we need if we want to be challenging for things like a Champions League and a Premier League. So yeah, that CDM role is very hectic. But if he does play Paul Pogba, with in the two CDM roles, I'll be kind of disappointed. But you know, I wouldn't put it past Oli because I have seen it. Yeah. Mm. Look, I don't think Oli's stupid, and he's been quoted, and this quote has gone around for some time about how he'd build the team around Paul Pogba if he got the chance before he became manager. So I think ideally he does want to play Paul Pogba higher because he knows that's his best position. Really, Oli's not stupid, but yeah, I do think he does worry about. The defensive side, and I think that's why he played two him in the whole in, in the whole midfield pair at the start of the season. And now I don't know. I don't know if Matic can do it alone. I, I've heard Marcus say he's convinced he can. I'm not completely sure. I think he has the attributes. I'm not sure about the legs, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Instead of them playing box to box, they are very similar, but I do think it can work because I look at David Silva and De Bruyne, and there's no outright number ten there. They're both. 10, 8-ish, that's very similar to Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes. So I think they could combine one. Yeah, well, well, we'll just have to see who stands the test of time, you know? When you said Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the quotes from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I thought of that meme. Tough times never last. Only (laughs) tough people. I don't know why. But anyways, I digress. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. But lastly... And the last talking point is I want to talk about the state of Manchester United during this coronavirus. There's a lot of things that have happened. Um, I know we didn't really plan to talk about this, but it's a curveball. Surprise, surprise. Um, what do you think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, uh, of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's comments really about exploiting the transfer market? And do you think it's controversial at all? Or do you think he was completely justified uh, um, you know, in saying what he said? Or do you think he could have worded it differently? But he's still right. I mean, he could have worded it differently. But like, I don't, I'm not going to blame Ole. I'm not going to give him bad criticism because yeah. Gary Neville when he did ask Oli he used the word exploit and you know it, it is what it is you know at the end of the day football is still a business 
And, you know, is it really exploiting? Okay, you could say it really is exploiting, but like, I'm just not like a, like a paradox here, but like, you know, if uh, someone like, let's just say Dortmund is in financial struggles and they have to sell Jaden Sancho for a lot less than what they thought. So instead of 125 more or something like that, they have to sell him to us for 80. I mean, it, at the end of the day, we're still helping them. You know, it might not be what they what they yes. wanted initially, but like we are still helping them. And I don't know, I don't blame Oli for saying exploit because at the end of the day, I just think it is what it is. And, you know, I, I don't look, I don't uh, analyze anything more than that. And yeah, we know how Oli is in press conferences, you know, he's not the best. So I don't blame him for saying exploit and using those words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is actually the first I'm hearing of this. Um, I do agree you could have used you could have used better word, word choice. You could have chose a better word choice. But, like, as Shinny says, it is what it is, really. Like, are we going to say no? If we can get a top player at a cheaper price, are we really going to say no? No, we won't. Because we have aspirations to be champion. We have aspirations to challenge. So, like, <laughs> you can't really get around that. If we have the power to do that, and as Shinny is saying, we will be giving them money, hence helping them. So, I don't see any problem with it. Forget helping them. What about PSG? What about Man City? They've been exploiting teams for years. Why the fuck can't be talking about them exploiting yeah. people? Plus, all um, did I, say also. Yeah, oh, you can continue. Continue. No, no, you can go. You can. Don't. Oh no, I was just gonna. I was gonna say, you know, plus Oli did say in that press conference that they're using this time to still to work. Like you know, the footballers might not be able to train and things, but them as him as a manager and the other players at and the other staff at United, they have other work to do. You know, now you can focus more on transfer deals maybe in the summer. Yeah. Know, scouting department and recruitment department and all of that you know now they have time so like you know in the in the section where united have been weak in trying to scout players and taking forever to get deals done they should be using this time now to get recruitment and scouting and possible uh, deals you know negotiations yeah. over the line in this period definitely you know uh, without going on too much of a rant <clears throat> i think we're in a very sensitive time in the world uh, we've been in a sensitive time for a long time when it comes to political correctness, but it's it's almost gone to a super like max level since the coronavirus. Everyone's super sensitive now. Words, words, ah, oh, words. You said this, you can't say that, but you know, like it is what it is. You know, we are exploiting teams because that's effectively what you're doing when you pay less for a player, less than a player's value when you know very well that he's going to give you way more. Or could yeah. give you way more than, than what you're getting them for. Yeah. You know, so. We did it with Bruno. We did yeah, it I was just Bruno. about to say, I was going to say, plus, didn't we do it with Bruno? Like, you know, it yeah, wasn't, it this Bruno. is before the like, coronavirus, and we're still under paid for Bruno. Yeah. But yeah, no, look, uh, United do have a lot of time in the off season. Um, you know, <laughs> trigger warning for the Liverpool fans. I'm going to say the V word trigger warning. You can pause mm. the video, you can leave if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but the season might get voided. And if it does get voided, sorry, I'm just putting the emphasis on that word to piss off the Liverpool fans, really. Um, if it does get voided, it's an it's an opportunity for Manchester United to right their wrongs. It's it's an opportunity for them to scratch out the blemish that is on the record of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And that is yeah. the worst start to a Premier League season in a long time. It doesn't matter now. It's going to be erased. Oli Oli outers will obviously hold it, hold him accountable. And to those people, I say, look, you don't know how the season would have ended, number one. Number two, let go. It's in the past now. Number three, this is a brand new start for everyone involved. Um, well, you know, for Liverpool, it's still the same shit. 31 years, no title. But for everyone else, it's a fresh start and an opportunity to, uh, to, really, to really buckle down and get some work done. And I hope yeah. that Manchester United do, do that. Um, last thing, what about Fred? With uh, with regards to Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba and 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 the 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 the, the real optimism around Grealish, Grealish's deal almost getting finalised. You know he mm-hmm. looks like he's coming to United one million percent. You know forget about Sancho, forget about Kane, forget about all these big names. I think Grealish is one that will definitely happen. Um, I don't have any any evidence, obviously, but this is just sort of a gut feeling because I feel very positive about the Grealish signing. What what must happen to Fred? That, see, this is this, that's the sad thing. Like, obviously, Fred this season has been phenomenal. You know, mm. probably a run up for player of the season, definitely in my eyes. And you know, Fred has been phenomenal. But like, you know, I I don't, you know, some United fans. I and I'm I, I've been you know I'm, I'll put my hand up. I've been subject to this as well. That I get too biased to a player. I'm like, you know, I didn't want Thailand because I didn't want to neglect like Martial 
and Greenwood. Yeah. But like if they are at the club, I mean, I'm starting to realize that you know if they're good, they're good, and there isn't a problem with having amazing players on the bench because if you want a side that will win a title and will win the Champions League, you still need amazing squad depth. And if Red does have to get benched and Aquilish has to come in and does have to get benched. It's not like they won't, will never play as well. They're going to play in the yeah. cup games. They will play a lot of games because the season will be long, even if we're in all competitions. And you will need a big squad to go and carry on throughout the whole Champions League. And if a Bruno or Pogba True. did have to get an injury during the season or something, and Grealish and Fred has to come in, that's, that's a, an amazing replacement. You know, There is no weakness in that replacement. So yeah, I don't yeah. think United fans, us as United fans, should feel bad about it. I understand as a point because like, if we did have to go sign, like let's just say an example, Harry Kane, and now Greenwood gets even further dropped and gets less game time. Obviously, it'll hurt me because I love Greenwood and stuff. But you know, at the end of the day, it's making my club stronger, and you know, we shouldn't worry about it. If our club, if we, you know, it's a good problem to have. Our our team is so good. Who must play? It's a good problem to have. That is true. Look, on paper, and in fantasy land, having. Pogba and Bruno Fernandes playing box to box and a one holy midfielder is what most United fans want, is what if, like, uh, in terms of the tactical point of view, seems like the strongest team we can put out. But I do think sometimes you don't really want to break what you've built on. And we have Fred here who's been playing very well. And I'm not saying he shouldn't yeah. be dropped. But if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer decides to keep playing the two midfielders, I can see Fred playing. I can see Fred playing next to a CDM. Maybe it's Matic, or maybe we bring in a CDM. And I don't know what the Pogba situation is, but if Pogba gets sold, I can see maybe a Bruno Fernandes starting alone and a, Gre- and a Grealish being on the bench. But yeah. in a world where he has to be dropped, like Shinny says, I wouldn't have a problem with it because we do need depth. And that's been a problem for us at this club. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. So without dragging this on for too long, Leave a like on the video. Please do consider subscribing and do uh, consider sharing the content. Uh, thoughts and prayers to anyone who's going through the, the virus, the other view word that we shouldn't mention. Um, but yeah, uh, let us know what your thoughts are. If you are supporting any other club other than Manchester United, or even if you are a Manchester United fan, let us know what you think of the season getting voided in the comments on below. Don't be shy. But um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else more to be said. Bruno Fernandes, Paul Pogba. Both great players, excited to see the development, uh, you know, even though the days are long and the days are hard and the weeks seem like they're never going to end. And this lockdown worldwide is, uh, is, yeah, is seemingly driving people crazy. You know, this is not something that's here forever. It will pass. It will. We will get through it as a society and as a world. So just stay optimistic, you know. Um, yeah. And if, you've, if you if there's something that you are struggling with, you can reach out if you want to, but if you don't want to, that's cool. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think that's been, a, that's been a good show and uh, peace out guys. Enjoy the rest of your quarantine time.